thing about Juan Gold. He, he's not a troll. He's a well thought out, he, and, and most of his responses are well thought out. And that's true. But unfortunately, Stephen starts this episode by lying. He purposely misquotes what I've said. Stevens makes a living lying. Now, these are just a few of his lies. He's lying about leading in Socratic questions. He's lying about admissible evidence. He's lying about burdens of proof. He's lying about court decisions. He's lying about legal procedure. He's lying about what bias, misconduct, due process, prima facie, direct knowledge mean in legal proceedings. And he's lying about the success of his motions. And that's where Stevens and I disagree. That regardless of how many times on my forum, and yes, he was booted off the forum because he lied, to turn around and say I've had no success, and continually say that I've had no success, that we've had zero success in court, is, uh, is just a lie. Now that statement is a straight up lie. I never said that Stevens didn't have any success in court. What I said was, is I haven't seen any evidence that convinces me that his motions cause dismissals of lawsuits. Now, that's the bottom line. Now, the thing is, we disagree on what constitutes evidence and success. I use the legal definition of evidence. Stevens uses Spoonerism's definitions. I use the common meaning of the word success. Stephen uses his Spoonerism meaning. Remember, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Stevens creates situations to sell you bullshit motions. Stevens has not produced any evidence that convinces me his motions have caused any dismissals. The only time I've seen his motions specifically addressed in court they were called frivolous and without merit. Now, Stevens produced two cases as proof I lied. And that is the reason why he banned me. Well, let's take a look at them closely. Here they are. The Leeson case and the uh, Heatherton case. The Leeson case case I challenged because it says, if you noticed up there, it says alleged defendant. See that? No, no court case, no judge, nobody puts alleged defendant on a court filing. And that made me immediately question the validity of the dismissal as well as the entire order. And I was right. This order was a total error and was rendered null and void, as you will see in the next slide. Stevens has yet to correct this lie. The Heatherton case, I guess that's how you pronounce the name, I challenged because of the wording of the in the order. Look closely and compare the wording to Leeson. You notice in the Leeson case it says, the court being full advised of the premises and good cause appearing. Now that's the way a lot most orders are written. If they're going to, they reflect back on the reasons why the order is being written. Now in the Heatherton case, if you notice, see the sentence before the word therefore? Well, that's the reasons for the dismissal, not the grounds described in Stevens' motions. Or the court would have said so, like in Leeson. Instead, it was dismissed because of the failure of the prosecutor to put forth any effort. There you have it. Those are my lies. More like Stevens covering up his lies with gibberish. I've seen and read more court orders than Stevens and his whole cult put together, and my interpretations are correct because I know how judges think. Now you know why Stevens really banned me, because I was showing him to be dishonest if not downright full of bullshit. 
Like most salesmen, Stevens has a loose relationship with the truth. Now this is the truth about the Leeson case. As you can clearly see by the highlights, the order Stevens claims as a success is an utter failure. And if you notice, it says the court hereby is ordered that the order from January 11th, 2017 is hereby declared null and void. The issue of prima facie. I think what we're supposed to do is go apoplectic. That and actually, Stevens, you do go apoplectic. Viewers, just wait a little couple of minutes and you will see this man just go absolutely apoplectic. He contorts his face, he raises his voice, and his face actually gets red. So stay with me and let's, let's watch and see what goes on. Let's continue. When the prosecution has made their prima facie case, we have to present evidence. Now that is the only correct, truthful thing Stevens says in this whole diatribe you're about to hear. So uh, keeping that in mind, let's continue. And this is where you start getting into your straw man. Prima facie, it's a Latin phrase meaning on. Okay, I'm stopping this here. I want you to uh, take a look at Stephen's eyes. As you can see, Stevens is reading from something. Is it a law book? Rules of evidence and procedure? A treatise on jurisdiction, perhaps? Or a treatise on evidence? No, it's fucking Wikipedia. I guess that's where internet lawyers get their legal knowledge. And even at that, I don't think Stephen comprehends what he's reading. Because when someone like Stevens doesn't possess fundamental comprehension and knowledge of law and legal procedure, they, they tend to imagine all kinds of points of law and procedure that have no basis in reality. And Stevens is such a person. Stevens, we're talking about prima facie evidence and burden here. And prima facie evidence and burden are based on the standard of more likely than not or the slightest possibility. In other words, the traffic ticket and its allegations are more likely than not true and are sufficient to meet the burden of establishing or proving jurisdiction. That's what prima facie evidence and burden mean, you jackass. It is usually at this point that the judge takes judicial notice of a prima facie case being made, and it is now up to Stevens or his victims to refute the prima facie evidence. Guess what? They can't. On his first encounter or at first sight. Prima facie, first sight. Uh, okay, so the term is used in modern legal English to signify that upon initial examination, sufficient corroborating evidence, you see, evidence is what we're talking about over here, and this is what the tr Yeah. We're talking about prima facie evidence over here. Look at that face. Talk about going apoplectic. And the prima facie evidence is made up of the facts of where you were at a certain time and place, what you did, and what was witnessed by a cop through his sense perception. All these prima facie facts prove that there is the slightest possibility that the allegations on the ticket are true. No other evidence is needed, and Stevens and his victims now have the burden to refute the prima facie evidence and facts, or the trial goes forward. Now, I want you to remember another word that he said, sufficient, sufficient evidence. Now, who determines what's sufficient? Stevens doesn't. The judge and the rules of evidence and procedure do. So let's continue. Look at that face. Goodness. Rules miss out. This is what the critics don't pay attention to. Evidence. 
is a very specific, I mean, it, it, it's not an all-encompassing thing. Not everything is evidence. Evidence is information that tends to prove a proposition. It's okay, Stevens. Did you even hear the words that were coming out of your mouth? Evidence is information that tends to prove a proposition. That's what prima facie evidence is. It tends to prove something. It doesn't necessarily prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. It doesn't necessarily prove it beyond the preponderance of the evidence. It proves it under the burden of proof standard more likely than not. It can even go down as low as the slightest possibility. So now keep that, those words in your mouth that you just said, Stevens, tends to prove. Let's see if you can do that. Let's continue. Relevant to proving a proposition. That's what evidence is. It's in. Now he just missed it. Just within one or two seconds, He's talk about it proving, not tends to prove. There's a difference. Let's see if he can keep it, his train of thought. Let's continue. Information that proves a proposition. Now, see now he's changed it to it's, it proves a proposition, not tends to prove, but now he's gone to it proves it. He forgets, he got three seconds and what he just said, he's forgotten already. Jesus. Let's continue. Saying that the laws apply to me because I'm physically in Arizona is information, but it doesn't prove the proposition. It's not evidence. Doesn't prove the proposition. That's right. Prima facie evidence doesn't prove the proposition. It tends to prove the proposition. It's a low, low threshold burden. Let's continue with this idiot. It's just a statement. This is why we have our logical fallacies to show what. Now, there it is, that spoonerism of logical fallacies. What Stevens fails to recognize is that what is and what is not admissible prima facie evidence in court is not governed by Stevens' spoonerism belief in logical fallacies. The rules of evidence and procedure govern, not spoonerism. Let's see if he can, he can keep his head about him here. Let's continue. Is and what is not relevant information that actually proves the proposition is true. Actually proves the proposition is true. Now, ladies and gentlemen, did you, did you hear him? He starts out that evidence is information that tends to prove a proposition. And now within a span of about four seconds, He's changed to it actually proves the proposition. Now you know why I call him an internet lawyer. Let's continue. So, uh, something is... Well, I'm afraid Stephen's ADH or ADHD or whatever it's called is starting to uh, kick in. I think the uh, medication's wearing off because uh, he seems distracted by some shiny object that's got his attention. Uh, we'll give him a moment to uh, regain his composure and train of thought. Let's continue. Get my attention here, and I better... Okay. So, let me mute this up because just in case someone try jumps on and, and this isn't... Hell is going on? Okay, so it's about evidence. Uh, sufficient corroborating evidence appears to exist to support a case. Uh, prima facie denotes evidence that, unless rebutted, would be sufficient to prove a particular proposition or fact. The term is. You got that? Unless rebutted. Now, that's one thing that Stevens and his uh, victims have never done. They've never, ever presented one relevant piece of evidence that can refute the prima facie evidence. Not once. 
And the reason being is because they can't. Let's continue. Used similarly in academic philosophy. Now there's Spoonerism. Spoonerism is academic philosophy, but we're not talking about academic philosophy. That's a whole completely different discipline than law. We're talking about law and legal proceedings here, Stevens. Try to stay focused. Maybe you need to take a little medication. Let's continue. Most legal proceedings in most jurisdictions require a prima facie case to exist, following which proceedings may then commence to test it and create a ruling. Now that's exactly what I said, is that if the defendant can't meet the prima facie burden at arraignment pretrial, then it continues to trial and that's where the, all the evidence and proof is presented. Okay, now here's a, here's a big thing that is missed. And it's not because we don't know this and, and I've never not explained this, you know, a thousand times. It's just... Well, unfortunately, you've probably explained it a thousand times incorrectly. Now you can see he's starting to get a little bit agitated, maybe a little bit apoplectic. Hang in there, viewers. Let's continue. No one wants to take the work on directly and debunk it directly. Remember. Now that's a straight up lie. I have taken on his work directly and I've debunked it directly. As a matter of fact, that's what I've done in my previous videos and that's what I'm doing right now. He's, he always gets so excited when he's challenged. Let's continue. The single best thing that the critics can do is lie saying the, the prosecution doesn't have to prove that. No, no, they don't have to prove the laws apply. They just do. <laughs> you telling me he's not getting apoplectic. <laughs> no, nobody's lying but Stevens. And nobody is bringing a case or arguing a case without evidence. That's just Stevens' opinion. And it has no basis in fact. Prima facie evidence is evidence. He's just read it. He can't even remember the words he read. What a douche. Let's continue. Do, right? That's the best the critics can do. Saying that the prosecutor can argue without evidence, but never explaining why we can't. And, and, and Like I said, Stevens, nobody's claiming the prosecutor can argue without evidence. The evidence is presented. The prima facie evidence is presented. I've explained it to you. The ticket, the statute, the uh, eyewitness testimony, that's all evidence. That's all prima facie evidence, and it's been presented. And I, on a side note here, these questions that Stevens once answered, what he doesn't realize because he's ignorant is that those questions that he's asking requires an answer of giving legal advice. Judges and prosecutors do not have to answer any of Stevens' bullshit questions. Keep that in mind, folks. Let's continue. And have it, okay? And, and be fair still. So how can a prosecutor argue without evidence? And we can't. And that's fair. Somehow explain to me how that's fair. So you go. Now, I don't know about this fair that Stevens keeps talking about. The only fair I'm aware of comes around once a year. It's called the county fair. Let's continue. 
Yeah, it, we're talking about the burden of proof as, re, as regarding prima facie. Evan, uh, in most legal proceedings, one... Yes, we are. And that burden of proof standard, I repeat again, is more likely than not, and it can go all the way down to the slightest possibility. Keep that in mind, folks, while you hear Stephen's gibberish babbling. Let's continue. One party has the burden of proof, which requires it to present prima facie evidence for all the essential facts in its case. If it cannot, its claim may be dismissed without any need for a response by other parties. A prima facie case might not stand or fall on its own if an opposing party introduces other evidence or asserts an affirmative defense. It can only... Did you hear that? Other evidence or asserts an affirmative defense. That, those are two things that Stevens and his victims do not do. They don't produce one bit of evidence to refute the prima facie evidence. And they never offer an affirmative defense. All they do is ask dumbass questions that no one has to answer. And I think they have to do that to hide their ignorance of the law and legal procedure. Let's continue. Stephen is getting kind of agitated, isn't he? <laughs> Only be reconciled with a full trial. This is the. Isn't that exactly what I've been saying? Is the trial is where everything is fleshed out? Thank you for agreeing with me, Stevens. Can you keep that thought in your mind? Can you remember that one simple little point? You have nothing else in that empty head. God, you jackass. Let's continue. The important thing here is it requires it to present prima facie evidence for all the essential facts in its case. Now, I'm going to go and, and quote from Iqbal or paraphrase from Ashcroft versus Iqbal. Legal con And if your past performance is any indication, you're about to quote something out of context that has nothing to do with a traffic ticket and is probably going to be misinterpreted by you. So let's let him have his little say here. Conclusions are not entitled to a presumption of correctness. Only facts that are presented, if presented, are taken as true. So prima facie is do the facts bear out. If the facts are true, if we accept these facts as true, is it likely that they committed the act? And That's exactly what I've been saying. Is that prima facie evidence on its face at first glance, if true, then it's more than likely true of the violation. He's coming around, but he's still twists things up. Let's continue. And so what they ignore is the fact that just giving your physical location, yes, that's prima facie that you were physically in Mesa. Does that prove the Constitution and laws apply to you? All by itself. Did you forget, Stevens, just a few minutes ago that prima facie evidence tends to prove? It doesn't prove. It tends to prove. And so, no, it does. Yes, it does. Prima facie evidence does tend to prove that just because you're somewhere, the laws do apply. 
the evidence to prove or disprove that is had at trial. Let's continue. Self? No! So let's take another fact. You're physically in Arizona, and the Constitution is a written instrument from 1910, or 1912. Is okay, he's getting ready to start his uh, standard sales pitch, and uh, he brings in all these spoonerism ideas and concepts, which, of course, have no basis in law and are not acceptable in court as a proof of anything. So keep in mind, he's talking through spoonerism here. Let's continue. When it was affected. Do those two facts taken on their own Except it is true, you're physically in Arizona, the Constitution is a written instrument. Do those two facts on their own tend to prove the proposition that you're physically in Arizona, the Constitution applies to you? Yes, that's what we've been saying. That's what prima facie evidence does. It tends to prove a proposition. That's the whole point of this discussion on prima facie. Do you think you can get it right, Stevens? No. So they're not I meeting their so. prima facie burden. So there's no reason for me to have to present a, you know, contrary evidence. And like I said, Prima facie burden is extremely low. It's easily met with a citation, a certified complaint, a summons, uh, the quoting of a statute, the showing of a statute, uh, the uh, direct personal knowledge of an eyewitness of what they saw using their senses. So yes, Prima facie burden is almost, well, always met. Stevens, you jackass. It, it, it's astounding to me that people would think that your physical, and try to argue that your physical location is, is prima facie evidence that the laws apply to you. No, it's just... Well, it's astounding to me that you've wasted 20 years of your life and have not learned one simple law, basic law, 101 information about prima facie. You've wasted 20 years of your life, and now you're wasting other people's lives and money. God, what a douche. It's just evidence of where you're physically located. The rest of it is just a legal conclusion. So we don't go app Just a legal conclusion? Is that your opinion, Stevens? Are you the one that decides what is a legal conclusion and what isn't? No. Only in your spoonerism jelly mind. Let's continue. When we just don't take it as, you know, it's just not responsive. It's not being responsive. You don't go apoplectic. What the hell do you think you've been doing? We've all witnessed it, and you're just straight up lying. And who decides what is a responsive answer and what is not? Is that you, Stevens? Is that your spoonerism? No, you don't make those decisions. to the actual argument. So we know what prima facie is, but your physical location is not prima facie evidence that the laws apply to you. You need more than that. That's the 
No, you don't need more than that. I mean, who says so? Who makes that determination? Not you, Stevens. The rules of evidence and procedure do. You should really pick up that book every once in a while and read it instead of uh, getting your knowledge from Wikipedia. Okay. The problem with having one proposition arguments or, or one, you know, uh, what, what's the word? The word is bullshit. You, you have, you know, it's an, it's an, it's a X equals Y proposition, you know, argument that if you're physically here, then the law is applying to you. Well, you need a little more than that. It's a re no, there's no such thing as X equals Y or that kind of academic philosophy bullshit. You keep up, you, you, you go away from uh, law and you go right into Spoonerism and people buy into your bullshit. I don't know who's more ignorant, you or the people that buy into your crap. Written instrument, and we know that that's not sufficient evidence. Your physical location has nothing to do with whether a, a written instrument applies to you. So I want to get to, to the uh, calls. Okay, now this is, ends the first part of this uh, rebuttal, and I want you to, uh, I want people to read, rewatch this as often as possible, and see the inconsistencies and the bullshit that this dumbass puts down. He he puts people in positions to where they have to buy his motions, and that's just wrong. That's just a liar and a thief and a criminal, as far as I'm concerned. Saying, Mark doesn't understand prima facie.